Hey guys. Ooh, look who we have here. What's up? People from the Chew Bendo. Yeah, come on, let's see what you got. Wimps. Come on, come on guys, what's your problem? Come on, let's fight, come on. Guys, guys, look at Come on, let's go. Hey, come on, take it easy, man. Come on, come on. Come on, let's take some food. I want to see what you guys got. <laughs> Welcome to the panic attack tape. What you're about to see is the culmination of all of the attributes, all of the tactics, all of the psychology put to use. Short of a real street fight, the panic attack is probably the most realistic drill you can engage in. Most drills in most martial arts systems are choreographed to an extent. Even when you get into a ring for a full contact fight, there's rules, there's regulations. In the panic attack, there are no rules. It's extensive body armor and it's no holds barred. Uh, I th hope you enjoy these. They're, they're vicious, they're exciting, and they're reality. This is what the street is all about. If you can make it through a panic attack, I'm sure you could survive a street encounter. Welcome back to tape five. Here are some of the targets to the head that you can go to. Work all the points on the side of the head with whatever strike you want, the ear, the temple, to the neck, side of the neck, front of the neck, the Adam's apple, any type of strike, clawing, grabbing, you can see that anything from any system will work. This is just the vulnerable areas, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, anything on the center line running down the body is pretty vulnerable. So it doesn't matter if it's an elbow or straight punch or what have you. If it's running down the center line, you can be sure to hurt the guy. There's the sternum, there's to the front of the face. So the whole facial area, the sternum, solar plexus. In the arm, you have inside the bicep. The bicep is very vulnerable. This is great to know inside grappling range. Okay? Hooking to the body, kneeing to the body. So the solar plexus, the floating ribs, the groin is very vulnerable inside the leg inside the knee is very very vulnerable jamming it thrusting snapping kicks doesn't matter along the back you have the spine or in the base of the back very painful when you strike there and of course behind the neck and the kidney if you hit to the side of the leg you charlie horse you hit in the back of the leg you really disrupt the person's balance and the Achilles heel for sweeping. Your choice of equipment is paramount. You need a good headgear. You need something that, that can really withstand a blow. This is a plexiglass helmet that's used in knockout tournaments in Japan. Uh, we have a variety of equipment. It's got to fit snug. It's got to protect the jaw, the mouth, the ear. And you got to be able to take a shot to the head. We use elbow pads so that you can strike without doing too much damage. Gloves where you can still trap. You need your fingers free. A good uh, cup to protect the groin and some sort of shin guard. When you do weapons work, for instance in our stick fighting panic attack, we use a hockey helmet so you can take a strike to the head and you hardly feel it. We also protect the neck, a very, very dangerous area to get hit. Elbows and good gloves so you can slash at the hands because that's where you'd go to take the weapon out 
at the hands. You need a good cup, of course, and we use fiberglass shin pads when you do stick fighting. This first panic attack is just to practice diffusing and moving. Oh, sorry, man. Hey, just we're watch good. them closely. Walking. Yeah, you can't walk. And watch how realistic the dialogue you. becomes. Man, this is walk. the stress. So I don't want you to walk. I want you to get out. Try to recreate. What's your problem, man? Okay, I'll tell you what, give me your money and I'll let you go. Well, That's fair. No I'm just taking a walk. Look, if you don't give me your money, you're gonna get trouble. Oh, man. Just Thanks. give me your money. You don't want trouble? Is that what you're saying? So yeah. give me your money and you won't get it. It's all it's very simple. You can do it. Before a drill, the attacker is told what to do, and the defender is told what to do. Oh, Not in terms of fighting, but rather yes. dialogue and their oh, character. Perfect. Perfect. What are you doing here? So they're not concentrating on their Taking punches or kicks. Taking a walk? Yeah. What's this on your shirt? <laughs> That's good. Good. Yeah. Getting money? I don't want any see trouble. We have a bullet. Yeah, look at me, trouble. Just give me your money and you won't get any trouble. When? I want your money right now. Get it. I got nothing on you. So you're telling me you want trouble then? No, I'm not telling well, you Well, if you don't give me your money, you're going to get trouble. Look, man. Look, man, what? You're tired. I what? want no trouble, I told you. I don't care. I instructed the defender I don't care. Right I don't want any not to fight. Watch the trip. What was that? Touch me? He said, under no circumstances do you fight not? Or, you. or run away from this. Because I can do what I want. Or, or just take me a walk. I own this place. I own this place. Come on. You going to fight or what? I told you. I'm starting with money. Come on. Come on. Look, relax before I keep. See, he's just trying to walk away from Look, me. man. I'll tell you what I'll do. Just get back over there on the path and keep going. And okay. don't ever come back here again. Okay. That's fine. Hurry up. Just I said hurry. Self control. You might laugh and say, well, that's not realistic. Yeah? That's hurry up. To do. It's much easier to throw a punch. That's better than right run more. Away or walk away. Very few people can do that realistically, so it's important to practice. Remember, in all panic attacks, the acting is important. It recreates the stress, and then the physical is inspired by that stress. Hey, speak. Yeah, I know you. Uh, I don't know you. Yeah, your name is Oliver, right? Yes. Yeah, Once again, uh, okay, which kind of guy everyone you? has a character. Uh, yeah, that's I you. You're the. Gonna fight. Me up. Come on, let's fight. Come on. They don't know how they're gonna fight. We just get them to go, and someone decides to fight when they want. And the fight becomes real and spontaneous. What is that? Hey, don't I know you? No. Yeah, and I know you. No, you don't. And this way you can distract... I know I know you. ...the, okay. the defender. I don't want to fight. Or vice versa. The defender can distract fight. the attacker. As you'll see later. I want to fight with you. Like, you think you're smart. I don't want to fight. It takes a while for the fight to start. You don't want to I don't want to know how it. to fight. Come on! Okay, I'll hurt some of the shots. On and pounce. But if you've done your conditioning, you worked your arsenal. All the movement's good. You really go at it and experience this stuff. I'm off to the side of the seat carefully for choking. Although we allow chokes, they're limited chokes. Because of the equipment and the ventilating problem, you have to be very, very careful. Any point during a panic attack, you can run. Look how he, he turns to slip a shot and grabs the chair to use it. When you watch in slow motion, you'll see the hook punches, the jabs, the tie kicks, slipping, sensitivity, grappling, all the tactics. 
And you see how we oscillate from range to range with, with reckless abandon. You don't stay in kicking range and then conservatively, conservatively move into boxing range. It happens in a, in a blink. And that's why all of those alive drills are important. So they begin to respond intuitively and instinctively. There's no time to think in a street fight. And if there is, they're lucky. A lot of people argue with me on that point. They say, yes, you can think, you can prepare. And I maintain that you can't. And if you can, it's because the guy you're fighting doesn't really know what he's doing. You're going to beat him anyways. I'm talking about when you're really pushed to the wall. see how wild it gets. There was a good example of the tie kick I was talking about. It hardly had any effect. At that moment, maybe the next day it did. This next panic attack is a two-on-one drill. We start the panic attacks without the equipment on in the videos just to show you the potential reality of the situation, how you could be one of the victims here. He's walking in the park, minding your own business, and couple of psychos right, come up to you. Me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, do you know where LA is? No, we're we're not sure. we're... I don't know where we are. You want to go to LA? Yeah. yeah. Now we put the equipment on and we recreate it. Even yeah. though he knows it's a two-in-one yeah. drill, uh, it's still two-in-one you know with equipment. LA? Yeah, LA, yeah, LA we're from out of town Montreal. Montreal. Uh, Metro. <laughs> 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 It's important to note that the defender can jump back into a stance and reverse punch one of the guys. With lots of training, you develop a detached mind so you kind of dissolve yourself from the knowledge that a fight's going to happen. Because, of course, a drill is just a drill. But when you experience this type of reality, you can have a mental and a physical toughness. I think it's close at this point. I think the two guys are beating him. I'm not sure. But seriously, in the panic attack, the object is not to polish your ego. It is not to win, it is not to lose, it is to learn. I remember at one seminar I had four guys, the biggest guys, put on equipment and fight me. And I did not at any point think that I was going to win, but I just wanted to see what it would be like to have four guys jump me at once. And, uh, and this is what you want to experience. So if you go in there thinking you're going to win, you got the wrong attitude. Street is about survival. So the idea here is to weather it, to learn from it. When could I have clawed the guy's eyes? When could I have gone for his groin? Why did I grapple here? Why wasn't, the, like for example, he's getting shots in the head, fine. Why isn't his hand up jamming the guy's arm? There he's grabbed his arm. Look, finally he's grabbed his arm after taking five shots in the head. A little too late though. Why is he holding on here? Why not a shot right to the groin right away? Or, or grab the neck and, and get a temporary choke in there? So it's not to, to debase or debil uh, belittle the person, but it's to learn, to watch the video after and go, wow, look at where he's open. Because we don't see these openings, because they only happen once. And that's when you do the panic attack. Whereas when you do one step or two step sparring or when you spar with certain rules, the openings are fairly familiar and you just try and work for them. But in panic attack, the openings happen once and that's it. It was that panic attack. It's history. It's gone. This is why it's an invaluable tool. It should be part of everyone's curriculum. But I urge you to do the training properly and buy the best equipment you can afford.
The next panic attack is what we call designated hitter. And that means that one of the persons is told to attack. Similar to one of the other drills we did in the live tape, in tape four. But now you've got the equipment on and the fight goes, so you don't stop. Okay, I'll leave. We only part. I'll leave. Are you just just let me go. Scouting our area. Just let yeah. me go. Look, hey, I'll just I, I know who you are. I'll just leave. Don't underestimate the importance of the dialogue. It's critical. It gets you talking. You're not thinking about your stance and, and what strike. Once again, designated hitter, one guy is told to attack. This is all right. Since the other yeah, guy is vulnerable. This is all part. This is all part. Relax, man. Relax. Are you from the gang in Shamrock? Yeah. What's the matter? Look, look, wait, stop. Stop. Stop a second. What's the matter? You're trying to muscle in our territory, aren't you? No. I'm just fucking walking, right? Yeah, I don't believe you. So what's the trouble? Get him, man. Get him. Get him, Kelly. Kick the shit out of him. Kill him. Come on, Kelly, you can kill him. Come on, man. Kick the shit out of him. Come on. Kelly. Come on. This is similar to a lot of fights we see when we're growing up. The gang jumps the guy. They're not really concerned for the time being who's winning. They're just the the leader. Come on, Kelly. 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 Come Come on, Kelly. Come on. You can do it. And here you got to be careful with the chokes. You gotta watch the guy. See, he's choking him, but he's not. He's letting him breathe, but he's restraining him. Come on, Kelly. Go get him. Kill him. Use your knee, Kelly. See how hard it is to breathe. Can I call you? Get out. The great thing about the panic out. attacks with the equipment is the fight goes way longer than it would in the street. So you learn to develop the instincts and movements. Go, go, go. This was really funny here because this wasn't supposed to happen. The other two guys forgot that it was designated hitter drill and ran after him and started beating up the guy. And uh, it, was, it was quite humorous because it was a total surprise to him. He'd already been fighting for a few minutes and he was totally wasted physically. Up, Liam, Liam, that's it. Kevin, stay down. You're needing a groin. runs out of there to complete it. Now, if you watch this over, if you watch the fast uh, replay from before, you'll see that the two guys on the right were distracting him with a lot of dialogue, and then the person on the far left ran in. Now, watching in slow motion, you pick up stuff. Both the viewer and also the participants watching in slow motion. You see the groin strike. A lot of times when you're in grappling, you just kind of hold and we lock because we're so used to what we learned in wrestling in, in high school. You should be clawing at the eyes, even though it's a plexiglass mask. Whether you physically won or lost, you know deep down inside what you're thinking, what you're doing, whether you're panicking whether you clawed the guy's eyes four times. I can think of a number of times at, at seminars where a big guy tossed me around, and it looked like uh, from the replay in the video and what the, what the class or the, the uh, students saw, it looked like, you know, he thrashed me. Except I knew that, you know, I had gouged his eyes out three times earlier. You just, obviously you can't do that. 
so these are things that you keep within yourself and you just know you reacted well and it just became an endurance thing for you that's what you want against the big guy you have to you have to think tactics smaller guy we tend to let our egos dominate and we fight more with brawn than brains you can see some good techniques there was a good sharp elbow a shot like that with no gloves on and no headgear that might turn the fight around that's what you want it's never say die here you just keep going until you're just completely exhausted the longest street fight in the world lasts like 30 seconds once it starts going physical and that's long See, these should be claws at the eyes on both guys here. But they're, they're locked into grappling. But that's what they were doing. It was real. So you, you can't correct it. You can only make an observation and try to think of that the next time you fight. But the more you do this, the more effective you become. In the beginning, you do it, and, and it's a... It's, it's humiliating and humbling and that's the important thing let it be humbling we all think we're a lot better than we are when you do a drill like this you find out that a lot of what you practice just doesn't work in real life it works when someone says okay I'll step over here and do this here and you throw that there and we we get into this whole XYZ chore choreography these are real fights Something else you can do if you want, if you can get a big, big, big bowl and fill it with jello and do panic attack jello fights. I'm just kidding. You can see how exhausted Dan is here. Sometimes what happens in a fight is you just roll up like a cocoon, try and protect yourself as best you can, and hope that they, they kind of get tired before you die. And then when you see the opportunity, you get the hell out of there. That's kind of what Dan did at the end here, I'm assuming. That's assuming he'd be alive after this. I always encourage people to run when they can. Teach yourself to run. Someone at a seminar asked me, why should we run? We know how to run. We're here to learn how to fight. I disagree with that. In Panic Attack 5, it's a three-on-one with feigned reaction. And that means when you get a good shot in feigned reaction panic attack, you fake the injury temporarily and then get back hey. into it. Hey man, take your talk. Yeah, well, no, I'm not sure, man. Where are you going? You're not sure, man. Yeah. Come on. You're not sure. You know better than to come over here. Once again, here we go. The equipment back on. Feigned injury, so when someone gets a good shot, they gotta pause. This is just another variation that gives the defender breathing room for his techniques. Fuck. Hey, what's the problem? You shouldn't have been at the camera, Get up. What are you doing over here? Hey, what are you doing here? What? What are you doing here? What a guy. What are you doing this here? is our turf. What? Hey, what are you doing? Come on. Hey? What are you doing? Oh, shit. Believe it or not, this guy's running for his life. He didn't know all three guys were going to come after him. And we kept running here with the Hill Street Blues camera crew. And the fight, the fight ensues. Go by the grass, keep going, keep going! 
you see, the other two guys aren't in there. That's because they each received a couple of good shots, so I held them back. So from three on one, it became a two on one, became a one on one. Nice uppercut there, and boom, he's gone. And here we find our our hero in a in a no-win situation. Three guys that are already gone physical. So he's playing out the submissive strategy. He's trying not to fight. To no avail. Eventually you gotta go, hey, I gotta sucker punch one of these guys and get out of here. See him, he continues to try and walk. Now, you never know what someone's going to do. I mean, if the guys stop, they stop, and then a new panic attack starts after that with maybe some new guys. So you don't know what people are going to do. You just give them characters. There's the quick couple of hook punches, and he gets out of there. Now, at this point here, it's completely real in the sense that the three guys were not told to run after him. They chose to do that of their own volition. And so Oliver, who's running for his life right now, is kind of wondering, he's going, wait a minute. And he's not in panic attack mode anymore. He's not filming. This is real. You have to experience the panic attack to sense that, which is why we gave it the name panic attack, is you forget that you're doing a drill. Couple of nice shots there. You can see how much the grappling work and the sensitivity plays a role. The guy's trying to take him down with a headlock, but he keeps spinning his center line. And it makes grappling, getting a guy on the ground very hard. There's a nice elbow to the head. A lot of the stuff is subtle. It doesn't take much to hurt someone if you hit them in the nose or the eye or the neck. a shot to the groin. He's trying to break free. He's throwing. Panic. Nice uppercut here. You get a shot like that in the eye and you can't see for a couple minutes. And then he's gone. In panic attack number six, it's full out two on one. What happens here is we're doing a night, night shoot, simulating getting mugged at your truck. What the hell's going on? Give us a wallet. We want your wallet. Do you guys want the truck? No, exactly. give, us the give us the wallet. Okay, 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 okay. Just calm down. I got it on me here. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Now these guys at this point have no idea what I'm gonna say. I just told them to come up and mug me. And they obviously have no idea what I'm gonna do. Hey, what the hell's going on? Give now us the money. I want your wallet. Calm down, guys. Now listen, give us a wallet. We don't want to hurt you. Okay. It's in my back pocket. Just, just relax, okay? You guys want, you want, you want the truck too? Just shut up and give us the money. Okay, okay, relax. Right, give me the wallet. Okay, hold on. Look. Let's watch all the strategy happening here. Submissive strategy happens right away. This puts them at ease because they see I'm not defensive, I'm intimidated by them. And I start talking to them. I'm going to try and distract them with the truck and the keys. This is buying time. I'm formulating a strategy. I'm deciding who I'm going to hit here. Then I decide I can use the wallet as a distraction. They're going to look down at the money, obviously. So when I pull out the wallet, watch their head shift towards the money. Now, they could have attacked me at this point, but it didn't make sense for them to do that because I was cooperating with them. You want to suck your opponent in in the street. Use that strategy. Their eyes are going to go down to the wallet. I'm waiting for that. I'm diffusing my vision. 
when I see that, boom, the shot comes in. Now, look, I throw this guy into his partner. That upsets his balance. Get in a few quick headbutts. He's finished. Quick, sharp hook punch. And the fight happened in a couple of seconds. Full speed, full contact. In number seven, what we have here is a very exciting three-on-two encounter. This was the first time this had ever been done, three-on-two. Mm -hmm. Worked out pretty good. Hi, guys. Ooh, look what I have here. The guys from Chufendo. Yeah, come on, let's see what you got. Yeah. Look, guys, what's your problem? Come on, I thought, man. Fu and I've been dying to meet you guys. Okay. Come, come on, man. What the hell's your problem, cool. man? Come on, man. Like come on. Style. Come guys, on. I think Chufendo sucks. Like, you don't whip. Trouble. Let's so, go. Come I am on. a whip. I don't want to fight. Come on, let's fight. I don't want any trouble, man. Yeah, I know it sounded like the script to a bad kung fu movie, but. Hi, guys. Ooh, look who we have here. What's up? People from the Chu Fendo. Yeah, come on, let's see what you got. Come on, guys, what's your problem? Come on, let's fight. Come on. Guys, guys, come on. Let's go. Come on, see what you got. Come on, come on. Come on, I take them full. I want to see what you guys got. Hey, come on, let's go. Let's go. to my partner in the truck. I said, just follow my move. Just move with me. He used the Coke can, threw it in the guy's face. Quick headbutt here. Had to take the guys by surprise. Once again, I don't know who's going to attack first. I decided to take the initiative when I thought they were most vulnerable. Notice how I keep spinning my center line. Oh, I got two guys on me. I cover a little bit. A little shot to the groin there. I keep spinning the center line. I'm pulling guys in front of each other so they're stepping on each other. There I get jumped from behind. I duck my head underneath and I cover. My partner just disposed of his guy, came out and pulled someone off me. Gets in a couple of really nice shots here, a nice elbow to the temple. There's a knee in the background. You see all the techniques, but it's... It's sloppy and it isn't, it's just real. We're just moving around. We got all body armor underneath. You watch that back in fast motion and see how spontaneous it here. Nice round kick to the face. Missed with a slash back fist because the guy was falling. You have to be very careful outside for obvious reasons, the, the pavement. But we had knee pads on, we had elbow pads on. There was little risk of injury. I'm going to watch this a few times and, and watch if the techniques are obvious. People learn so much when I'm doing the seminars. People, uh, they come up to me after, they're, they're, they freak out at how much you learn because you realize that you're working on adrenaline. You can't stand there and go, I think I'll throw a round kick now. Stuff just comes out. It's a total rush. It completely surprises you. Let's watch it again fast this time. Watch all the action. Hi, guys. Going, man? Ooh, hey. look who we have here. What's up? People from the Chu Fendo. Yeah, come These on, let's see what you got. Wimps. Come on, come on guys, what's, what's your problem? Come on, let's fight, come on. Guys, guys, what's your problem? Oh, 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 oh. 
Panic attack eight is a sleeping panic. Okay, cut that. The latest addition to the panic attacks is the sleeping panic attack. Why I wanted an eyes closed panic attack is you can always prepare, even though it's a spontaneous drill, you can always prepare because you can see what's happening. In the sleeping panic attack, you simulate being asleep, so your eyes are closed. There are some restrictions, however. You obviously can't come up and just sucker punch the person because you would knock them out in real life. You want to use this situation to recreate what would happen if someone were to attack you in a hotel room or your house. So what we do is we use a pillow over the head, a choke, pulling the covers over the guy's head. You want to do something that would wake the guy up in real life, give him a chance to fight. So you can't hit a guy over the head with a lamp or something. You got to be very careful. The environment, like I mentioned before, brings out a lot of tension, a little stress. It's, it's really exciting to do it in this type of environment, but you got to be careful for obstacles like TVs, the corner of uh, furniture, falling on the floor, stuff like that. But they're real good, but be, <clears throat> be sure that you're very safe with that. Environmental panic attacks are a real exciting addition to the panic attack, but be careful. Make sure that you don't hurt someone. There's no excuse for negligence. In this sleeping panic attack, I have no idea what's going on, quite obviously, because eye, my eyes are closed. I don't know if you can sense this, but when the fight starts, there's a real sense of panic in me because I can't breathe. Also, the covers are restricting my movement. And you can't get that much leverage off of a Sealy Posturepedic. So you see, I'm trying to move here, but I don't have a, the, the solidity of the ground behind me to help me shift. The mattress is giving way. This is the pornographic portion of the panic attack. I try to get him on the floor, get him into a chokehold here. Fighting on a bed for the first time gave me some insight into, into the instability of a, of a mattress in a fight. This is what you want about environmental panic attacks. What's it like on grass? What's it like on ice? What's it like on a mattress? We're stalemating and working to get something free. And I'll make my move. See, I'm pinning back his hand. I think he might have done it if he didn't have the headgear on. Panic attack stick fighting is it's kind of a, a scary part of the training because you're dealing with a stick that stings and moves in excess of 100 miles an hour. What you want to do with this is work the stick techniques because they develop great instincts, but also don't forget about the grappling, don't forget about the trapping, don't forget about your punches, don't forget about your kicks. Keep going, keep going. When we do the panic attack fighting, even though I lost my stick there, tell the guy, keep going. Go after me. No one's going to give you a weapon in the street to help you out. Of course, I move him away to get my weapon back. These are pretty big bamboo sticks as well. You don't want them too big, but you don't want them too light either. You want to feel them. You want to be afraid to be hit. All right, I lost my stick again. I'm working. Look at the footwork. Move into grappling range. You can't fight a guy from outside. He's got a weapon. Yeah, they gotta get out of there. Or you gotta get in. Now I got the weapon. All right. Let me tell you, it's more fun when you have the stick. That was a great move. You went under my stick. Got me in grappling. This is so grueling. You have to experience this. 
five, six years of doing panic attacks, you've never had an injury. I mean, you have pulled muscles and, you know, carpet burns and stuff like that, but we've never had an injury because we use good equipment. People are trained properly before they're allowed to do the first panic attack. So don't get all excited and run out and kill your best friend. If you want to train properly, you can do a seminar, great. If you can't, if you have any questions, feel free to write me or call me at the school. I'll try and help you out. Hope you enjoyed watching the panic attack tape, but I've got to warn you, it's very, very dangerous, even though it looks like a lot of fun. Don't attempt the panic attack unless you study the other tapes in this series. An important concept is you have to use the acting. Okay, it's an important reminder. A lot of guys do it and they just get into the fight and it's not as beneficial. You have to use the acting to bring out the real stress and the real tension. So thanks again for watching.